Therefore, Isaiah Broom, after long consideration and prayer as to the strength of your calling to be a missionary of the Lord's Word, we, the elders of the London Missionary Society, now send you forth that desolate part of Africa to which he calls you will be a hard place for you and your family. Hard to the body and to the spirit. You seek to bring to the Lord a most strange and savage race. You will endure many trials and many dangers. But the Lord will protect you we are all folded in his mighty wings. Take the word of the Lord unto the ends of the earth, and may he be with you always. Amen. All people that on earth do dwell, all people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord with cheerful voice, himself with mirth his praise forth tell. Please, come in. Take a seat. So, I am happy to tell you that the Director General of Internal Affairs will grant you the necessary documents. Your expedition to the northwest region of our country can go ahead. But please, we are very impressed with the care taken with your preparations. You've been commendably thorough. But the Kalahari Desert is a dangerous place. I don't mean the terrorists. That has been highly exaggerated. If we had anything to hide, would we let you go there? No, my dear friends, now all official obstacles have been removed. Think one more time of the physical risks involved. No? No. Then all that remains is for me to give you your permits. My congratulations. Thank you very much. And a little gift. led thy servants to this desert of the fallen world. Look upon my family with thy kindly grace. May my faith be for them thy pillar of cloud by day, thy pillar of fire by night. And Lord, grant a sinner's supplication. Appear in a dream to the secretaries of the London Missionary Society to tell them of our plight. Look, flowers. It's not flowers, Hosea. It's grass of the desert. Insects eating the linen. We must shake everything out. Twice, three times every day. All day if we have to. Get his head off! No, no! Jonah! Daniel, stop this one! It's John Ball's head, Mama. He's got to have his head in the middle. Like the savages' father is to find to bring to Jesus. You come on like that, Jonah, and your good father will strap you blue. Yes, Mama. Africa hair. Your young brothers will breathe insolence from it. 
No more than from the heir of Lambeth, Mama. No children should see what you have seen in this country. Babies blind with disease. Men yoked by the neck as slaves. There are diseased eyes in Lambeth too, Mama. And are not all men before the Lord yoked in sin? Oh, Ruth. You should be in England. Under the Christian roof of a Christian house. Taking tea with a young man. Little cakes and a homely fire. Should you not, my dear? We are sent by Christ to this place. As a Christian family to convert the men with no heads. The men with no heads. Are we not, Mama? Yes, Ruth. Yes. And what animals the boys have seen. Giraffes eating trees. Now what would giraffes eat in Lambeth? <laughs> Dirty roofs. <laughs> The noses off old gossips upstairs windows spying on their neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> I wish my uncle were not. We bring the world with us. Thus said the Lord God of Israel to me Take the wine cup of this my fury at my hand and cause the nations to whom I send thee to drink it, and they shall drink and be moved and be moved. Esther, you're not to speak to your uncle. I'm not speaking to him, Mama. Just wait for it. <laughs> Four more bottles remain, little Esther, of London gin, lugged to Africa's shore. Had you better not pick up the bottle, Uncle. Why oh, should I do that, miss? Someone passing will cut their foot. Who <laughs> Christians that come after us to go to the land of the headless men when fathers made them repent and wear clothes. If the headless men had to wear clothes, Esther, how will they see through their shirts? They'll have holes cut in them. Even Hosea knows that, and he's only three. Esther! <laughs> And Hosea's not drunk all the time, is he? Why are you drunk all the time, Uncle? Yeah, I see things. What things? Hanging gardens of Babylon, Esther. Can you see them now? No. Are no. oh, they beautiful, the gardens? No. Paradise on earth. It's the only paradise that can be. <laughs> I've lost my faith, Esther. It's run into the sands of this yes, filthy place. Well, you still believe the Lord Jesus can save? Uh, the Lord Jesus is in all our hearts. What a thing for a young girl to have in her heart. Corks on a cross rotted for 1800 years. Esther. Sarah. That our pot's still greasy. We cannot spare water, we will scour them with sand. The bat from which we eat will be clean. <laughs> what in the that name of all the sand do we do in here? My raiment, my life. Like a sweet meadow. I just did that. Uh, uh. One end of the earth to the other. And 
lord. Look upon my brother here. Burn him! And burn him! Not there, brother. The headless savages. The missionary society sent us forth. The fairy tale. No books of travelers. The gentlemen of the missionary society are ignorant gentlemen. The Lord will provide. Uh, provide a race of men with the heads in the chest for you to preach at. Eh? It is faith. And I can faith make men, women, and children with ears and their armpits just come into existence. That's a faith! It's a second imagination. The Lord sustaineth. He does not! You look at your family! Love them! Their bodies, their souls cry out. This journey is against nature itself. There's nothing for us here, only the center of our bones. And you should be seeking out whatever it is you do seek out in the slums of Lambeth, you know? Among real people. Men with no heads. In the name of reason. I know the name of your reason, brother. It is Mr. Reason Beelzebub, the devil's lieutenant. With reason? You can make the slums of Lambeth into palaces. With reason? You can make even this desert a guard. And what is reason made of you, brother? A pisspot! Drunkard! And that's just myself. A week. The vessel doth contaminate the content, huh? <laughs> Why must the weak always be right and the strong always wrong? Huh? Shut up and help me. stuff out. Bloody tent.
said rocket. Yes, I know you said rocket. Well, what's the problem then? No problem. Great then. Wonderful. Dark. It's light and then. Psh can't get used to that. Does something to me. Are you ready? I am, yes. Okay. One, One and two and three and over! Over! Oh. Oh. Very wonderful. Oh, that's a great help. Very. When you were driving. You turned the Land Rover over, riddling the wheel to the music. I kept shouting at you to stop. All right. Fate takes a hand. What's a bit of adventure? George is lying in that tent, unconscious because of your bit of adventure. Oh, no bones broke. I mean, George will love all this when he comes round. You're bloody irresponsible. If fate takes a hand. What do you want me to say? Sorry? Yes, please. You can't stand the sight of me, can you? We've got to look at that radio. <laughs> can't stand a sight! Let's not start tearing each other apart. This is the first thing that's gone wrong, so let's just put it right. Right? All for me coming back home now, weren't you, eh? What? Working class and unemployed? Oh, jolly hockey sticks. Maybe you'll go native. Oh, for crying out loud. Yeah, redundancy money came in handy, though, didn't it? But a jolly expedition fund. Oh, 3,000 quid for this experience. I must be mad. Why can't you say it? Why can't you say you're sick, scared? Because George could die, and it's all your fault. Oh, so. So. Come on. Come, come out. Article 5 continued, stop. Now we have personal problems, stop. We've all heard of friendships, comma, marriages, comma, love affairs breaking up and people never speaking to each other again after a simple camping holiday by the sea. Stop. Imagine how much greater are the problems on an expedition like this. Stop. Murder would be light relief. Stop. 
There is an old Arab proverb. Stop. The hate between those who cross the desert is a flower of the desert. Stop. Winning out the old Arab proverbs, are we? I made it up just then. I'm sorry. It was my bloody fault. And I am sick scared. How is he? I think he's getting a bit hot. <sighs> oh, Georgie, Georgie, what have you got me into? Enzymes in the pituitary gland in rabbits. Sorry, like doing experiments on rabbits. Rabbits! Hey! Ten years ago, if you'd said what would happen with four million unemployed, you'd have been told the social fabric would never stand it. There'd be riots in the streets. There have been riots in the streets. What? Oh, yeah. Then he said to me, I'm spreading myself as thin as margarine. <laughs> And then he burst into tears. Oh, yuck. What did you say? Then I said to him, on bread or on the rug. <laughs> Charming. Missionaries. A whole family. They disappeared. In the, uh... In the Kalahari Desert. Two brothers, the wife of one of them, and six children. Never heard of again. And the purpose of your expedition is to follow where they went? Oh, no. There's more to it. No, not even that. You know what's really interesting is the people the missionaries set out to find, to bring to Jesus, a truly amazing race. Men and women without heads. It's lovely jelly, this. No heads. Right. Faces in their chests. Their sinuses will be connected to their lungs. Are you sure your facts? It's all documented by an Italian explorer in the 17th century named Giovanni Botero. In 1620, he crossed the south of Africa and met them. But I found a book he'd written about his journey in the British Museum. It had pictures. So give them a photostat. Then, there's a story of the city of salt in the Kalahari. The city of the headless. In 1956, two Portuguese prospectors said they'd seen it. The South African Air Force did an aerial survey to find it. And did they? No. But what were they looking for? A city in a pattern that we know. See what these amazing travellers' tales are about. It's evolution going in for human engineering on an incredible scale. Things like your brain running down to the bottom of your spine. A headless mother suckling her baby through her ears. Your heart will be in your throat. <laughs> Sounds a bit revolting when you think about it at first, but what we've got here is an account of the human race transformed, made anew. You are 100% off your rocket, you know that, mate. And who are you? Oh, I wander around the streets when I see a wanky student party, I gate crush it for the booze. Any comments? Your trouble is, you haven't got any vision. Uh, and you have. People with noses sticking out of their belly buttons. Uh -huh. I can see you're an intelligent person, a bit burky, but then intelligent people often are. You see, the difficulty people like you are in is without vision, intelligence is just pissing in the wind. Like with the headless people. Just because a fact is unknown doesn't mean to say it's not a fact. Are you with him? George and I are the expedition that you are celebrating. To this desert. Is he safe? Oh, 
George is highly organized. A wizard. He's talked all sorts of people into giving us money. I mean, I don't tell people with money that I'm looking for people without heads. <laughs> I just tell them what they want to hear. George is only bananas in his mind. I'm an incurable optimist. I believe that somewhere on the planet, there's a person you can go up to who will tell you the secret of life. Now, even if you do get the answer through its navel. And sadly, this party is a bit of a funeral wake. We're 3,000 pounds short. The Scottish biscuit firm that promised 3,000 pulled out this morning. So, the expedition's off. It seemed a pity not to have the party since we made the jellies. So, well, what was it for you then? Going on this madness. How will I ever know? <laughs> I've got three thousand pound. Duh! I was at Vauxhall's Luton. I was made redundant. They've got a robot doing what I did now. No redundancy money came through last week. I cashed it. Well, you know, pride. Fate takes a hand. Uh, one condition. I go with you. Even a desert full of headless men's got to be better than bloody Luton. I'm glad you believe in fate. Let's get pissed. How is he? He's the same. Oh. oh. to use this. Oh, no, I thought you were going to learn that as backup navigator to George. I did. I've forgotten. And one of us may have to start walking. <laughs> mm. <sighs> I've got Toya Wilcox. Where is she now?
It's only been 48 hours. I mean, no one really gets lost. Not these days. You know, they've got satellites up there, photograph every inch of this planet. Yay! Yeah, all we got to worry about is if the water runs out, we're going to be on Diet Pepsi all the way. Ow! Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's all right. My key. My flat. In the Fulham Road. Between this key and its lock, draw a straight line through Africa. How many children going to bed in black republics does that line touch? How many corpses beside the road in black tyrannies? Fields of maize, dead cattle in droughts, trains packed with migrants, tidy villages, City slums, fishermen, bauxite miners, gorillas in the camps, prisoners in the jails, farms, hospitals, hydroelectric dams, Chinese railway engines, Russian tractors. How many students pouring over Engels? White mining engineers getting into the Johnny Walker. Between me and my front door. Under the sun. Me? I'm just a tourist. All that hope, all that violence. <laughs> what do they mean, the spirit of the agreement? All that hope. Mm -hmm. All that violence. Yes. If I go on this, I can write about it first hand. A chicken in here. I heard a cluck. Lion. Desert journey. Well, I can do stuff on it for the women's page, too. The tampax in the sand, eh? That sort of thing. Hmm? They can't do that, Freddy. We've lost 300,000 copies this month already. Freddy, Freddy, the father of the chapel's with you. Right, put him on, now. I heard it again. There is a chicken in here. This epidemic of practical jokes has got to stop. I am the editor of a national newspaper. I know I'm young for the job, but it's not dignified. I want to tell the truth about Africa. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Get me security. Hope and violence, eh? This desert journey of yours, some kind of personal quest. All right, take three months off. Cross a desert, have a baby, what you like. Thanks. But beware. All journalism tends toward the condition of shit. Who said that? Oscar Wilde? She Oh, my God. 
I think you planned that. I think you decided on oh, that. Shut I think up. you had that on a list. <laughs> yeah, well, you can tick that one off now. There are hidden depths to you. Jake. Hello. If all things aren't possible here, between us here, stuck here, then where else can they be possible? I don't get you. Uh, what you, you mean? You mean you want to turn this uh, desert disaster into some kind of experiment on my body? Can a woman rape a man? Oh, don't flatter yourself. You. Uh, me there. I could cry. I am hungry. Oh, some freeze dried ravioli, we'd have to wet it. Oh, I meant hungry for experience. <sighs> and it's a vice. What do you want from me? Philosophy? Moral uplift? If you tried to take me on this expedition of yours, I'd be arrested and end up in a South African concentration camp. We breathe the same air, Susan, but we cannot occupy the same space. <sighs> you 
European notion of exploration. The notion that enlightenment is in foreign parts. You want advice, you say, about the politics of the countryside you will travel through. concerned wise. You're so decent. You want me to say that the struggle for liberation on my continent is cleaner than any other, more humanitarian. But it is not. It is a struggle. There have been struggles on your continent. Tourists visit the mass graves to this day. You see, I fear you're dishonest. Your concern, your decency, only mask how your culture has always seen mine. There's something prurient, something deeply ugly in the European hunger for experience. Africa is still to you some kind of a slave ship. You still fantasize about black, thick, naked bodies down below, writhing in the filthy hold. That is the historic image Europe has of Africa. And it will never leave you. And you will never understand the liberation struggles of the third world until your wealth decays and you in your turn, have lived in chains. Miss White Lady. Miss European. Miss, how many million dead? I'd forgotten how to use it. So we've just been waiting for you to come round. Uh, Ten days. Nine. Ten. Nine. Ten. So, as expedition leader, what do you recommend? Interesting. George! George! Oh, no. George! Hang on in there! Don't conk out! Whatever you do, just hang on in there! It's a sextant. <laughs> Progress. How do you work it? Oh, yeah. Look through the hole in the sight for him. Yes, I remember that bit. Write it on the star of your choice. Star of your choice. In the unsilvered half of the mirror. Yeah, yeah, right. Rotate the unsilvered half of the mirror until your second star 
is coincidental with your first. Uh, uh, second star. Second star of your choice. Then, read the angular distance between the two stars. Step above the sublime makes the ridiculous. One step above the ridiculous makes the sublime. Turn up. Oh, oh what, what? The Bushman? No, no, I, th I think the Bushman all dead, George. No, not Bushman. Who well, then? But come on, not that lot with heads in their chest. Spare us that, please. George! to know about survival. I mean, they've been out here since 1848. Yeah. It's knowing what to do to yourself. Like a new science. They've got so far on with it. If they go blind, they grow new eyes. Picked it up from the Headless Wonders, did they? They won't talk about it. It's secret. Jake. Of course, surviving like that has a lot of pain involved. We'll have to get into training. George, no, we're, we're just... Yeah, just for a smoke. Is there any Pepsi left? What? I could do with a Pepsi. Uh, yeah, yeah, um... Just, you know, don't go away on some. Oh. What are you going to do? Don't ask me. You do something. Don't sulk. I'm not sulking. We're going to die, and all you can do is sulk. You bloody stupid cow. <laughs> Oh. 
Right. Pain training. Talk about that, but <laughs> Julie Christie. Uh, what about her? Oh, I think she's lovely. <laughs> Far from the riding crowd with Darren Stamp. Oh. Now there's loveliness. Can't stand it. <laughs> All the beauties of the world. Well, she is. <laughs> Try and swallow. Try. Samanji, who's off the soup? I feel a signal. Is a good cut a ganjan. Is a good chan de lang as ill. Who's in Sanga Panga is? Ah, Kusasa, some Too, those burdens. Not before your eyes. I'll be your grave digger, sister, but don't try me too much. Move away, brother. It's unclean, I've fallen ain't you, father. Hold your mouth, child. Unclean. Leper. Philistine hell fiend. Move away, brother. For propriety's sake. City dweller dreams of the open sea. Sailor in the mast dreams of the roofs and attics of the slums. Uh, they in the deserts dream of fields, and they in the fields dream of deserts. And so we spread, dissatisfied. In anger and in loathing. <laughs> Thy right hand, O Lord, hath become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces thy enemy. Thou sentest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble. <laughs> 
I shall be as still as a stone to let people pass over and <laughs> Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? You've broken my leg! How did you come to this? Where are you? As boys, we stood with Christ against all the scorn. Remember, I had a ton of sons in Olgate when we bore witness in the streets, threw mud pies at us. <laughs> I was seven years old. <laughs> I remember. How we talked of Africa, even then. Children in bed at night. A light to the quarry. Surely the brains. The words to the... The word to the desert. How did I come to this loss of faith? The future, brother, broke out in me like a fever. Drank to slake it. Is he, is he? Oh, brother. The men and women of the future live without God. Yes, Reem. And he is dead. And never live. And the Lord liveth in my heart. How could I live without faith? How could I breathe not in the shadow of Mighty wings. I, I will leave you water. <coughs> I came to this desert to convert and was myself converted. Hey, brother, the missionary <laughs> mission answer. <laughs>
Where your mother and your father? Father damned him. We shall have left him where father did at the gates of hell. Father's dead. Father is on the right hand of the Lord with Mama. The communion of the saints. You are just a horrid little boy. Of the host in the seven ranks. <laughs> There'll be manna every morning. Hang out in the sand like fresh bum. Be a tap poking up out of the sand. Yes, all shiny and water to wash our hair. The will. Israel. We are Israel. We are the chosen. We've only got to say our prayers. I hate you. I hate oh. you. I hate you. Ruth, get me the book. Woman, do not disobey the man. Then, his son, called Mechabaeus, rose up in his stead. And all his brethren helped him, and so did all that held with his father. And they fought with cheerfulness the battle of Israel. So he got his people great honor, and put on a breastplate as a giant. As a giant. That's me. Reason! Think! You children! Can you? Don't walk around with corpses on your back! Ow! He, without fault, cast the first stone. <gasps> Ruth! Then we'll cast you out. Cast her out into what, John? This? <laughs> it's all dead thoughts in your head, little boy. All the dead thoughts that make you wicked and cruel and so stuff. There are two tribes now, Uncle, in this desert. Mine is Israel. What is yours? Not yours. Tribe of bells. Ruth, come on. We see angels. We'll send them back for you. Ruth! We are going over into Canaan. What do you think, Esther, my little niece? Are the seeds of this dead? Can we plant trees, grow grass? And shall we become lovers and have many children in our new pastures?
شاد Nature has no outline. Imagination has. British dog. Oh, <laughs> 
Landro Vecile, Kudal. Aksit. Kibo Flamo Sade. Kolumbia. Mesho? Susan? The last time we met was in a cocktail bar. You had a tequila sunrise and I had a blue Hawaiian. Do you know what found you? A photograph taken by a satellite 90 miles above. And now you're going home, Susan. I don't know what to do. Cry? Bloody marvellous, Sue. No, not now. Oh, how's, um, your little girl? She's fine. I don't know her name. You wouldn't be able to pronounce it. No. Sue? Can I take the tapes now? Yeah, sure. I'd love copies, though. How to do this? Have you thought of a book? We'd have serial rights, run extracts in the weekend section. What's the matter? I'm not going to write the articles. 
Well, if you need more time. No. Come on, sweetie, what is this? You've not been to a Sunday behind my back, have you? Sorry. Unworthy. But for God's sake, we sent you to the bloody desert. We talked you into it. How about some loyalty? Well, I know loyalty may not mean much to someone who contemplated cannibalism. Sorry, also unworthy. But for God's sake, you, you nearly died. You lived in the Stone Age for 12 months and came back healthy. With a kid. For crying out loud, people will want to know what you thought of that experience. What you think of it now. No, I haven't anything to say. I just got lost in the desert. Why tell lies about it? <laughs>